As Sister Lisa said, my name is Franklin Maglo. And this morning I'm going to, we're going to look at um, camping skills for, for you, the senior pathfinders. That's um, ranger, voyager, and guide. Um, what I want you to do for me is to take your notes, right? And um, as we go through for the presentation, we will see how best we can interact. All right, um, you have to listen attentively. Unfortunately, I don't have a screen to share with you so you can um, follow my notes, but you will just um, pay attention. I'll outline the points that I want you to pay attention to, and you need to do some penmanship, right, in order to take your notes so that you can you can get a clear understanding and you can have it in your thing. As time goes by, I'll see if I can make a slide up for you and pass it to Director Fabian, who would pass it on to your counselors so you can have it for your revision and to put in your workbook. Okay, so let's see how we can how we can do that. Okay, um this, this morning we want to spend some time to look at camping skills and um, why we camp, the benefits of camping, and what we can do to make our camping exciting. All right, how many persons don't love camping? Raise your hands if you don't love camping. All right, so Everybody loves to camp. Oh, I see some hands who don't love camping. All right, but let, let me let me just just outline here. There are there are much benefits in um in camping, and as we go through through the presentation, I hope you would have a desire to want to camp in the outdoors, because what, what we're looking at is basically outdoor camping. And I hope that we all can um, appreciate what is going to be presented there this morning. Um, let me just, I want to read something in your hearing, which I believe should help you to understand where we are coming from as we looked at um, Camping. Um, since there are modes of recreation, there are different ways of recreation which are highly beneficial to both body and mind. Um, an enlightening, discriminating mind will find abundant means for entertainment and, uh, and diversion from sources not only in innocent, but instructive. So camping is good for both the body and the mind. And when, 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 we, when we are out there camping in the, in the wilderness or in the outdoor, it, we must recognize that it brings, it helps us to, to um, see God and to understand who God is. So I want us to, I want you to begin to take some quick notes and we are looking at the, the benefit of camping to you as a pathfinder, as a voyager, as a ranger, and as a guide, the benefits of camping to you. Number one, it creates an intimate knowledge of nature. It creates an intimate knowledge of nature with a love for all its facets. So it creates an intimate knowledge of nature. When you're out there camping, it creates an intimate knowledge of nature and it gives you a love for all that is surrounded in nature. And I must say to you that these memories will always stay with you. So when you go out and you have a good camp out, 
it will stay with you and you will keep talking about it even when you're in, you in your adulthood. All right, so that's number one. Number two, it, um, it creates a meaningful spiritual awakening that reveals God's presence. So when you're out there in nature, when you're out there in nature, it gives you a meaningful spiritual awakening, a meaningful spiritual awakening that reveals God's presence. So in short, you can say, when you're out there in nature, nature reveals the presence of God to you. When you look at the high mountains, when you look at the, the, the quiet valleys, right? When you look at the sunset, when you, when you think about the quietness of the, of the surrounding, it reminds you that God is good, all right? So, so number one, it says it, um, it creates an intimate knowledge of nature with a love for all its facets. And that will remain as a lasting memory for you. Number two, it's a meaningful spiritual awakening that reveals God's presence. And you can look at the mountains, the valleys, the running rivers. Number three, it creates a respect for the dignity of work. It creates a respect for the dignity of work and the satisfaction that comes from sweating and the satisfaction that comes from sweating and struggling to cook over a smoky fire. And the satisfaction that comes from sweating and struggling to cook over a smoky fire. The satisfaction that comes from struggling to build your camp shelter or even a bridge over a valley. All right, so, so, so these, are, these, these are one of the benefits and there are, there are others that I'll give you, I'll give you this free for, for the moment, all right? So you have one, an intimate knowledge of nature with a love for all its facets, the mountains, the valleys. Number two, a meaningful spiritual awakening that reveals God's presence. And number three, a respect for the dignity of work and the satisfaction that comes from, from sweating, and struggling to, to cook over a smoky fire, build a camp shelter, or a bridge over a valley. Right, so these are three benefits. There are, there are, there are more, but I'll just leave three of them with you this morning. All right, the second area that I want to, okay, everybody's clear with what I just outlined. You can just answer in the chat yes or no. Everybody is clear what I outlined in, in the um all right. All right, so we can proceed. All right, let's look at the benefit of camping activities. Number one, camping activities helps to develop lifetime hobbies. Camp camping activity helps to develop lifetime hobbies. And it also helps to develop an all wrong ability. An all wrong ability. Camping activities also. 
Number two, it helps having, it helps having plain fun and excitement. It helps having plain fun and excitement and new experiences. Plain fun and excitement and new experiences in a safe and sane way. What we need to understand here is while camping is excited and you are gaining experiences, it must be noted that it must be done in a safe way. All the activities must be safe and it must, it must not be crazy. You know, there are some persons who are quite adventurous and they, they don't see the risk, but they just want to try it out. So there, there is no need to do um, what we say, crazy stuff, right? There's no need to do crazy stuff while you are camping because you'll put yourself at risk and you'll put others at risk. Okay, so it's important to understand that. Number three, the camping activities helps you to, do, to, to balance work, play, rest, and some hard work. So camping, camping activities help you to balance work, play, rest, and some hard work. It also helps you to observe hours of rest and sleep. Now, is Abraham Maglo, what do you mean by that? There, there are times that um, while you're on camp, some folks just want to have fun, fun, fun. When you say it's time to rest, they don't want to rest. When you say it's time to sleep, they don't want to sleep. When you say it's time for hard work, they say they are tired. Now, if you cannot balance work, play, rest, and hard work while you are camping, camping won't be meaningful to you, all right? So you have to learn to, you have to, learn to, um, to balance that. All right, we good so far? All right, if you have any issues, you can just um, put a, a note in the chat and I will see if I can, um, if I can, um, address it so that we can all we can all go well all right so we can we can move on i think we have a time limit so we have to try to cover and your, your section has a lot to cover i will not be able to cover everything this morning but we'll have to select an opportunity to see how we can give you more information and your counselors will have to do some of it Um, the information I'm, I'm giving you, you, you have to take some notes because I am, I am reading out some points, I'm detecting some points, so I would re, you would require to write, right? So I, I don't have a screen to share so you can write from the screen, but I am detecting some points, some salient points or some important points that you need to um, take down in your notebook. I, what I said, I'll try to put it in a point form and send it out to your, to Director Fabian, who will pass it on to your director. All right, let's go to the third section, which is the spiritual value of your camp life. So when you go on a camp, what is it? Okay, I'll try to be slower in my reading, in my, um, my speaking and reading out my point. Okay. What, what, what is it you, you're going out to camp for? Why are you going out on camp? What is it you want to achieve? Do you just go out on camp because you're tired of, of meeting in a clubhouse or you're tired of meeting at church or you're just fed up, you want to just go out? Every time you go out on camp, you must have an objective. Let's look at the, um, the spiritual, 
the spiritual value of your camp life. Number one, your camp life gives you a closeness to nature. Camp, your camp life, and I talk about outdoor camps, eh? not camping in schools, but camping in the outdoor, gives you a closeness to nature. Number one, for your spiritual value of your camp life, it gives you the closeness to nature. And um, from the presentation that Pastor Denny just did with you all, you will recognize that when you're doing your, your outdoor and you're lighting your fire, you're using what is around you. So you're out there in nature, you don't have a galvanized house, you don't have a tent, but you'll have to use the trees and the bush around to make your shelter. That gives you an appreciation for, for nature. Number two, your, for your spiritual value of your camp life, it gives you an experience of harmony and order. It gives an experience of harmony and order. It gives an experience of harmony and order. Number three, it, it, um, it helps to see God's great creativeness. It helps you to see God's great creativeness. All right, number four, adaptable, adapti, it gives you the, the opportunity to, to adapt in the environment, right? So for example, you go out on an on a overnight camp or a weekend camp in the outside, in the bush, it gives you the opportunity to adapt to the environment. So just imagine you have your, your, your shelter and um, rain start to fall and you're getting wet in the uh, inside in, under your shelter, you know, and that kind of stuff. You know, it, it, you have to adapt because that's where you are. That's your shelter for the night. You can't leave to go anywhere else. So you just have to adapt. You have to um, see, how we say it now, you have to camp it out until, until daylight or until um, the rain stops. And the last one is cooperative fellowship. Cooperative fellowship. So you are on, on a camp, always remember, you are not the only one sleeping in the tent. You are not the only one to use the, um, the area of the wash, the wash area, right? So you have to cooperate. You cannot, remember you, you, you are not at your home where you have your own personal bathroom or you have your own personal bed that you're going to sleep on. You are, you, you, you are cooperative fellowship, cooperative fellowship. You you are always say no. You are you are on the same bed with somebody else, you know. So you have to cooperate and, and and make sure that the other person is also is also happy, right? And that that, that helps to give you a sense of responsibility and accountability for your fellow camper, right? For your fellow camper, your your fellow camper wants to sleep. And you don't want to sleep. So you cannot um, stay up the whole night talking when your other fellow camper wants to sleep. All right. So that, that's something that you have to bear in mind. All right. We good so far? All right. So I think we can, we can move on because our time is running by very fast. Okay. Um, planning a camp. 
Some persons love camping, some persons don't. But planning a camp, let's see what's involved in planning a camp because you cannot just get up and go out there in the wilderness and camp. You must plan it. If you plan, you will succeed. If you fail to plan, you will fail. And you'll have disaster and you might have problems. So let's, let's ensure that whenever there is, a, there is a, a, a outdoor activity, it must be planned. It must not be haphazard, but it must be planned. So let's see what is involved in planning a camp. All right, so your topic is planning a camp. All right, who plans the camp? Okay, I'm not too sure if you can unmute your mic in the, in the chat room, but can somebody try to answer me who plans the camp? If you can unmute your mic. Okay, I hear him, somebody. All right, nobody wants to answer me. Who plans the camp? All right, um, Gabby is stating the director, but is it only the director who plans the camp? No. All right. The, no. Right, no. The director is not the only one who plans the camp. The Pathfinder Committee, right? The planning is done Club members. with the Pathfinder Committee, the director, the councillor and the unit councillors, the, the, um, the captains and the scribes of the club. All right? So, so the Pathfinder Committee plans the camp. Or it can also be planned by your, it can also be planned by your unit. It can also be planned by, by your units. All right? So your unit counselor and the unit members can plan an outdoor activity, a wilderness camp, but they have to ensure that, they, um, that the Pathfinder director and the Pathfinder committee is aware of it. So they plan it, but take it to the Pathfinder committee and the Pathfinder um, director will take it to the church or the church board. And then um, the parents will be informed and then the, the, the um, unit members would be, would be informed and then the planning continues. All right, so number one, the Pathfinder committee or the Pathfinder unit plans the camp. The Pathfinder committee plans the camp or the Pathfinder unit. For example, the, the guides can unit counselor and the captain and the scribe and the unit members based on the requirement, can plan and plan an outdoor, but it must be channeled through the Pathfinder Committee and then to be channeled to the church. So one, the Pathfinder Committee plans, then it is taken to the church board, then the parents are being notified because the parents has to consent. Then the parents are being notified. And then the entire Pathfinder club or the Pathfinder unit is also notified. The, the Pathfinder unit, for example, like your friend class, your companion class, your explorer class, your guide class, and that kind of stuff. Okay, um,
So when, when that first part is being done, then the club begins the plan. So the club now, for the club, and the club would, in, when I say the club here, it makes reference to the director, the counselors, the unit scribes, the captain, the um, instructors. The, the, the club would look at a few things. So let's look at what the club has to look at. Number one, the club have to, have to note the reason club plan. The club has to note the reason for going. The club has to plan the transportation to make sure that there is enough tents, to make sure that is a general first kit, to make sure that the site is being inspected and that they have permission to use the site, and to make sure that there is a, there is a safety plan and ensure that all parents are notified and consented for the, um, for, the, for the activity. Now the unit, which is your, your class, your friend class, your companion class, your ranger, your voyager class, with your counselor, because on the camp, you will be required to cook and to build your shelters in units. You will be required to one, plan the menu. So the unit plan the menu, and make sure you take notes there because some of that will come into your, your final quiz for your evaluation, right? So the unit plan the menu. The unit ensure that the correct outfit is ensured that the correct outfit is being, um, is being worn. Can you repeat please? Which part you want me to repeat? The one you just said a while ago. Okay, so the unit plans the menu. Ensure that the correct outfit gear is, 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 um, is, is worn. So for example, the unit, the unit counselor will ensure that everybody knows what they should carry. And I'll outline some of that in a while. They um, ensure that there's proper sleeping gears. Ensure that your backpack is where you know exactly what goes into your backpack. Ensure that the correct cooking utensils are being um, carried. Arrange item for the campfire. And ensure that there is a person, a, a first aid kit. So whereas the, the club director and them will ensure that they have a general first aid kit, but it's advisable for each unit to have its own first aid kit. All right. Um, it's so good. So far. All right, so we, we, are, we, are, we are going to look at the guidelines for good camp out. All right, you are ready? Okay, let's move on. Guidelines for good camp out. Number one. All right, under, under this section, the general, general rules for running the camp out. insists on absolute consideration for other persons. So the um, unit counselors and everybody should, should um, be considerate 
to others on the compound. Insist on absolute consideration for the for other personnel persons. So in that in that regards, there should be no practical jokes. Insist on absolute consideration for all the persons. No practical jokes. So no mushing. Ensure everyone takes part in all activities. And that includes your discussion, your devotion, and that kind of stuff. So everybody should have a part to play in, in that, right? A very important point you need to remember under the guidelines for a good camp out, be sure that everybody recognize that God is camped with us. Be sure that everyone recognize the presence of God at the camp. All right. What do you bring on the camp out? You have a bag to pack. What is it do you put in the bag? A flashlight. All right, number one, your hiking clothes. And that includes your boots, your rain gears, water. Right, so your, your hiking clothes your boots and your ring gears. And this, these are clothes that, it doesn't matter if it's rain or sun or mud, you can, you can use them and, and, and still be comfortable. Number two, change of clothes for night wear or emergency. And you should always have something warm. And that, that, is a repeat, uh, that is repeating because you would have done that in some of your classes before you have reached that stage. But you need, I just repeating it to you for emphasis. So a change of clothes for night. Obviously, unless the, the circumstances prevail, when, when you go out for the whole day and you out time for, for one thing, you need to change into something warm for the night. Um, free. Food, and you you would have made that list before you before you leave, right? What food you need to bring in? You have you have made that list before you leave, and you should have that in your bag, your sleeping bag, or your sleeping um uh, your your sleep, something to sleep on, right? And remember, when you're out there, you always have to have something that can absorb the moisture, so, so a plastic or something that you can rest your sleeping bag on, so that the moisture on the ground will not go into your bag and cause you to get sick. You need to have your flashlight. You need to have your compass. Your flashlight, your compass your Bible, your notebook, your pen, your first aid kit. Right, most times we go out on camp and campus forget the Bible. Right, campus forget the Bible. They even do, they even do want to bring their partner the notebook to take notes, right? So, so you, you have to ensure you have those because you have you need to record the events on the camp out. All right. Remember, we said food is based on what you decide. What were the list of food that your counselor would um outline for you? 
Because what you don't want to do is to have a heavy bag with food because you like food and then you cannot walk, right? So you have to take just the food that you need. Yes, you, you may have your little snacks, but how much snacks do you want to take out? All right, so, so you can bring snack, yes, but you have to be considerate because you have other things besides the snacks to put that are very important to carry in your backpack because every man should be able to carry his backpack through the journey. Let, let's, unless a, a, an emergency or something happened to you that you really cannot carry it. For, for let's put that example, I have my backpack and you have your backpack because you overload your backpack with snacks or with unnecessary stuff. Then it becomes heavy for you and then you want somebody to carry it for you. The person have to carry theirs and yours. I remember we said we have to be considerate. Right? So, so, so what, you, what you are carrying in your bag is what is needed by your unit for, for cooking. So your unit might decide we're going to cook um, rice, uh, we're going to do some um, baking with flour, some egg, so the director or the unit counselors would, um, you know, to make sure that there is all the food rich on site. And thanks very much, the person will give the, um, remind me of that, that, that you share the load. So one person doesn't carry all the pots plus their baggage, all the food plus their baggage. So you share. So one person have the pot, one person have the sugar, one person have the match, one person have this, one person have that. And when you reach on site, everybody bring to the table all the items that are needed for, for cooking. Thanks very much. All right. Um, personal cleanliness, like your toothbrush, your toilet paper, you need to make sure you have that. And something that you must have, all campers must have that, irrespective of where you camp in. You camp in a school, you camp in the bush, you must have those. I will emphasize you must have these. And I will call them out. Number one, you must have humor. You must have humor. You must have patience. You must have a help. You must be helpful. And you must be determined to make it to the end. So I'll go over it. You must have a sense of humor. You can't be always complaining. You must be patient. You must be helpful. And you must determine to make it to the end. All right, so we are we are good. Okay, um, Pastor Dennis spent some time with you, and he spoke about fire. Obviously, in your in a, in um, camping in the outdoor, there are portable stoves. There are different um, means that one can use, right, to cook. There are small um outdoor stoves that you can put in your bag with a, little, um, a small cylinder and you can cook your food for you, right? But um, in nature, you, you, you want to use what is wrong. So the fires at Pasadena outline, you, you can use them for your different um, cooking. Um, at another session, I guess when you come down to doing the, your ropes, your knots, your knots, we will talk about um, how you can build camp furnitures, right? That you can use in your, on your campsite, right? Now, um, depends on your resources. You can allow your, your, you can cook in pairs or you can cook as a group, right? It depends on your resources and your food supply, right? But all of this, 
you must plan it before you leave, right? So for example, if the guides are playing a camp out in the bush and there are eight guides or 10 guides, guides, you all can decide that every two guides will put come together, prepare their own menu, and they will do their own cooking. Now, it's going to be fun because some persons will struggle to get their fire going. Some persons will, will eat and while the others are still cooking, but at the end of it, there must be a cooperative spirit. So for example, if two of us are struggling with our fire and the other fires are well lit and they are going and food is cooking or, or, or baking or roasting or frying, whatever they are doing, and the, fires of the fire of the other two is not, has not been lit yet, what would you do? Would you laugh? Would you make fun of them? Or would you go out and help them to get the fire lit? What would you do? Type, type your answer in the chat. Mm. <clears throat> All right, Gabriela is sitting by me and she's saying that she, although she knows it's not right to do, but she will laugh. Is Gabby, is Gabby right? No, we can't give Gabby thumbs up for that. We give Gabby a thumbs down for that. Right? Right, Kasia? No, Gabby is not right. We give her a, thumb, a th um, thumbs down for that. Right? Okay? Right, the basic principle is we have to be considerate of our other fellow being. Okay. Um, Another general rule for a good camp out is um, camping on the go. Like um, I think yesterday we were, we were speaking of, um... all right, Hannah, you, you, you joined Gabby to laugh, but no, we say we'll all help to make sure that everybody has something to eat. All right, okay, so camping on the go. For example, you decide to do a night, uh, uh, you go on a hike and you plan to overnight. That is camping on the go. And next morning you will finish the hike and you return home. Now, in order to do a camp on the go, you have to one, remember to start on time, right? So that you can arrive your, on your site on time, okay? You have to remember that um, that you have to take a, a rest after every five, after every three hours or two hours to make sure that there is a um, there is a regrouping. All right, so you have to make sure that happens, and you have to train yourself mentally and physically, physically to enjoy all type of weather and all type of terrain. Right, so you, you have to ensure that you are um, you, you you are mentally you are you are able you prepare yourself. If it rain, I will enjoy the rain. If it's a hill, I will enjoy the hill. Right, so you have to um, prepare yourself to enjoy whatever um, the terrain or the weather plays upon you. Okay. Um, We, we, we have to also look at, um, as I said, you have to hold a notebook and you have to keep, you have to keep notes of the events and the things that, um, that happen around you, your compass, your map reading, you have to take um, note of that, right? So you have your compass and you have to take note of your different locations and different directions, right? And, and, and by, by so doing with your compass, you can draw your own map of your path, okay? Um, you, you have to also note when you, when you return home, so now, now that you have finished the hike, when you return home, there are things that you have to do, right? 
Number one, you sort out your backpack. Um, you, when you sort out your backpack, you consider what you actually use, what you use for, for, from your observation, and what you now know you will never use. You discard it. So normally, some persons normally have their hiking backpack. So when you finish your hike, you open your bag and you see what you use. Okay, I use this, I use that. Then what you use from your observation and things that you didn't use, you, you did not use and you may never use on the hike, you take it out from your bag. That will reduce the, um, the load, right? That will reduce your load. And you give God thanks for, you give God thanks for taking you back home, taking you back home safety, safely. Okay. Um, okay, be, before, we, be, before we go, we have a few minutes before we end. Can, can um, one of the things I mentioned that we must inspect the site before we go. So, so somebody must know where we are going, know where we are going to come. What are some of the rules uh, and that you would identify when you come to selecting where you're going to come? You're just, just type them in the chat. Some of the rules that you that you will you will follow in terms of selecting your campsite. Now we're talking about selecting the campsite where you are going to put your tent. So what are some of the rules that you would um, observe there? All right, how dry or wet the area is. That that's good. Yes. So you don't want to put your 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 your, your campsite in a damp area. Right, because if you put in a damp area, you have things like mosquitoes, and that kind of stuff will, will bother you whole night. It has to be safe, yes. Right. Okay, you have to look for pricky objects or not, not, not in a stony area. You have to have a good water source, yes, that's good. No overhanging trees because the branches will break and fall in your camp, on your camp, on your tent, and you may have you may have injuries. An open area. All right, any other suggestions? Right, open area and flat. Not in a too a windy area, right? Because if it's extremely windy, your, your, your shelter would, um, would blow away. Your fire would not, um, there'll be too much um, wind, your fire will out, and you will be able to carry the heat that you, that you require because the wind will take it away. Yes, that's good. Any other suggestion? So all of these suggestions that you have that you have written, so you you will not put it on a, on a, on top of a cliff, right? You will not put your tent on top of a, of a cliff, in an area where there is um, a lot of wild animals, right? You try to avoid um, areas where you know knowingly know that there is there are wild animals there. You will avoid those areas. Um, you have to remember that you need a good supply of um, firewood, right? So area where there's a lot of um, dry materials for your fire. So when you're going out to inspect your site before your camp, you have to make sure that those, those that area is covered with those, um, with those stuff, okay? So you have to make sure that that is, um, that is there. The water supply is as, as mentioned, Right, the area is not too too um too wet or, or, or swampy, right? That would make it um uncomfortable for for um for sleeping or for even having having your activities. Any other suggestion? Okay, all right. So so we we have no other. Suggestion. Um, one of the things that that um, that mentioned 
Pastor Danny made reference to it as it relates to fire, that nobody should know when you are done that you were there um, camping in terms of your fire and your camping site. So the area should be clean, right? You don't throw your plastics and your bottles and your, refu your refuge. You don't throw them all about the place, but you back them and you dispose of them in a approved manner, right? That would um, keep the environment clean and um, making sure that, that um, you, respect, you respect nature, all right? At all times, we have to learn to respect nature because God wants us to, to take care of the, um, of the environment, all right? God wants us to take care of the environment, okay? So um, I just want you to note there are types of camping. There are two types of camping. That's my last point I want to make with, make with you. There are two types of camping. One is site camp, which is static, and one is traveling camp. Site camp and traveling camp. Can anybody tell me what, 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 what they understand by site camp? Side what? Site camp. What do you understand by site camp? The camp, the camp that is located, the site where the camp is supposed to be located. Um, yes, but no. That, remember, we mentioned two types. We tell you site camp and a static camp. Yes, yeah, site camp, yeah, a traveling camp, sorry. Side camp is there where this camp is located, right? All right, somebody said yes to be in a stationary, a stationary place, which means that this is where you camp every time you have a camp. So for example, you have a campsite in Kahu, that is in the central area, in the St. Joseph area, there's a campsite there. So every time you have a camp, everybody knows it's Kahu we're going. Is it fun to go car home all the time? Some person will say, Miss car home again, Miss, we can't go somewhere else. It's like you're going to camp in SDA school every time there's a camp. Right? Every time there's a camp is, is, um, is SDA secondary school. Miss, I don't I go to Alpha World on secondary school camp. Miss, let's go Granby. Miss, let's go Laplin. All right? So the, 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 the um, Side camp is where you have a campsite, where you have all your facilities there, and that's where you always go for camping. What about a traveling camp? All right, Gabby says when you go to different places for camp every time. Anybody else? Anybody want to see what a traveling camp? Okay, a traveling camp is when you, for example, you decide you're going to, um, you're going overnight, you're going on a hike, and you're going to, on somewhere on the hike, you're going to stop and you're going to camp out. All right? So th this is a traveling hike, a traveling camp. All right? So you have your backpack and everything on your back. On the on the um, on the side camp, you may not have to carry beds, you may not have to carry cook, cooking utensils because this is already on site, all right. But for the um, for the traveling camp, it, it, you have to carry your tent, you have to carry your your cooking utensils because you are on the move, right? A place where tents or shelters are set up, right? So as you move. You, you set you, 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 you set up for camp. So for example, we are doing a two nights over camp, overnight camp. So tonight we camp in Mont Diablo Terre, 
next night we camp in Montapito, right? So that is considered a traveling camp. And we have to vary those camping styles so that they can, can be more fun, right, to the children, right, and to us as, um, as pathfinders. So we don't try to camp in one place all the time, but we, we try to make the camp exciting by moving on to different locations for camping, all right? So, so this, these are the two camping st um, styles that I want you to bear in mind. I also want you to remember the um, component of a good camp site, and we mentioned the site selection. I also want you to remember the um, benefits of camp to you as a person and the benefits of camping activity, all right? Um, also the planning of the camp. What makes a camp exciting and fun is proper planning. So unit counselors, unit members, you know, you have to plan. You have to plan the camp, right? And plan it well, get everybody involved. No one should stay on the sideline, right? And as Pastor Denny mentioned, when you open the bush, there is no internet service, you know? So, so it is nice if when you're out there on the camp out, yes, you have your phone, but you're out there not to spend time on your phone. So if you have data and you want to do X, Y, or Z on your phone, if you get involved in a camping activity, I can guarantee you, you'll enjoy it better than on your phone, looking at the same thing you have been looking at all through the week when you're not on camp. All right, any other que any question? I am done for now. If there are any other questions, I will, um, I will listen to you. You can write in the chat. You can unmute your mic and ask, but um, my presentation is done for now. As I mentioned, I will um, type it out and um, send it out to you, to you for your, for your director. Who will um, share it with you that you could have it in your in your notebook, all right? But you you need to go over your notes because some of what I mentioned here to you will come forth in your evaluation. And into the, while 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 it's true, we have spoken about it. Unfortunately, we cannot actually do it physically, but I, I would have preferred to do it physically with you, the rangers, voyagers, and guides take you out to the mountain, allow you to sleep out there without tents, you know, allow you to cook out there, you know, without tents and just enjoy nature. See God for who he is in nature, right? It's fun. So when, when curfew is over and lockdown is over and we, and we have the opportunity to, we will do the exercise in physical, out in the outdoor, where you enjoy it to the fullest. Now, some of you, based on where you live in, you can take you can make your shelter in your yard. Instead of sleeping in your bed, you can decide to use a tarpaulin and make your shelter on the outside in the yard and take a night outside there, right? Try something. If you have a tent, instead of sleeping inside tonight, put your tent outside in the yard. And um, rain or not, pitch your tent and enjoy sleeping in the, in the outside. This will prepare you for when you begin to go out in the bush and sleep out there in nature. May God bless you if you have no other question. Yeah, it's some fun to default. Yeah, put your tent outside there, man. Or if it's a nice moonlight, go in your sleeping bag and just sleep on the outside. Because you can't go in the bush, we can't go out as a club. We have constraints with COVID, but we can make fun, we can have fun in our own yard, right? If you have neighbors who are close to you, um, well, where you can't even bring people through into your yard, but there, there are ways that we can, um, we can enjoy it without having to go out in the, in the bush at this time because of the restrictions that we have.